Hi, good morning, everyone. In my 20 years dedicating to, edu well, dedicated to education, I have had the opportunity to see how many of my students have evolved to become professionals of all types. I've always thought over these years that how lucky they are and how lucky I've been that our society provides with such uh, or so many resources for any child to access education. So, uh, in the Basque Autonomous Community, one child costs, I don't know if you know that, more or less approximately 7,400 euros a year. Of course, this is an investment in the future because we want them to be uh, citizens, competent citizens, people who know, people who can play a part in society, and people who can integrate in the labor market. Of course, uh, most uh, we, we instill them with several values, but above all, we want them to be homo sapiens. I mean, people, people who know, okay, they are, they are homo sapiens, people who know, people who are wise. Uh, I like that idea, at, but I prefer much the idea that apart from being homo sapiens, these people could be homo compartitives. I mean, this is a word I made up, but I'm sure you understand if I tell you that I mean people that from apart from knowing, wants, want to share. Uh, I would like my pupils to be aware of the, mm, of the possibilities, the resources, the opportunities the society provides them with. I would also like them to be more sharing, and I would like them to contribute in any sense to society. I can't think of many ways to do so, to contribute to society, but I'm going to concentrate on my own experience. But first of all, let's look back to, let's go to a school. And let's see, nowadays education and the development of new technologies. We all know that the model of a school we've got now belongs to a model uh, which was used a hundred years ago. And many of us, both teachers and parents and everybody, uh, most of us are apprehensive, perhaps even fearful, to integrate these new technologies into the classroom. But all these technologies, if used properly, can help us to change the old model, I suppose, in many ways. For example, by breaking down the limits of the the limits of the classroom, the physical limits of the classroom, also uh, by embracing diversity and by enabling the child to cooperate, to work in teamwork, to be more autonomous, and also, uh, and especially, to share. Okay, then I say, uh, I told you that I was going to talk to you about my own personal experience. And everything started, so it was before, everything started six years ago when I undertook a project called Euskal Jaquinta, which was created for 17, 18 years old in Jaquinta y Castola in Ordizia, which is not very far away from here. And, okay, uh, when I started with the project, I felt that, uh, that that was a turning point in my life. The key to the creation of Euskal Jaquinta was twofold, really. On the one hand, we wanted, we were very keen to integrate new technologies into the classroom. But on the other, as you can see in the picture, we were aware of how dismotivated our pupils felt towards the subject. Okay, let me... Wait. Can I? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and they were very dismotivated. So, with the full backing of the ICT team of my college and trying to overcome this apathy, I set up a blog. Uh, right from the beginning, I knew, or I wanted, I didn't want to be just a complementary tool, the blog, but I wanted to be 
the heart and the core of the subject. So uh, I started to work on that, but that meant shelving the textbook and moving to the computer room the three hours of the subject, the three weekly hours of the subject. Nowadays, we are lucky enough to have one laptop per child, so we don't have to move anymore to the computer room. You can see here my pupils working. So, but what were our aims and what are our really our aims? We want to do a lot of things because I'm a very positive person and I always want to do a lot of things. But among other things, we wanted to teach the subject, the content of the subject, using all the possibilities the new technology the new technologies give us. We also wanted to have a more active and dynamic approach to teaching. We also wanted pupils to manage their own learning process and foster group work. But apart from all those, we want, we want it and we want to help the development of Euskera, the Basque language on the net. And we also want to share everything we do. So this is the blog. And let me show you some uh, how we work or some of the things we do. For example, we write articles. We write reviews of books. We interview people who have contributed significantly to the Basque culture. For example, here's Bernardo Achaga, a very well-known writer here. We also create and generate our own grammar revision exercises. And we record audiobooks. Okay, but let me show you just one or two of the things we do in more details. As I tell you, uh, we write articles, and I think uh, we have been publishing articles for six years almost daily. And I think the blog is a particular, a particular good means of uh, trying to improve the writing skill. Because before that, before the blog, all my pupils wrote, uh, wrote about the topics I said without any passion, I must say. But nowadays, not everybody, but they choose their own topics. They choose what they want to talk about, to write about. And apart from that, all the process is more involving because they have to provide links, multimedia, videos, and they go further in the studying not only the past language, but also in the subject, the topic they choose. So this is another example of another article. And let's have a look at the grammar exercises, which I really like. I mean, instead of doing the classical pre-written grammar exercises, we design and generate our own exercises, grammar revision exercises. And that means that the process is more complete because they have to think about all the sentences, they have to provide the answer keys, and so they are more engaged with the activity. Apart from that, once the process has been finished, we publish all the activities we do. So uh, everybody, people from other schools, use and reuse our activities. And also, as you know, that internet has no boundaries. People from all over the world that want to improve their Basque also use Count to Hakinza and use our activities. These are more examples of activities we do. More. We also do songs and things like that. OK, and the last one I want to share with you is the recording of audiobooks. This has, it's also, the purpose of this activity is twofold also. On the one hand, we want to practice reading aloud, but also we want to spread and to promote past literature, because once we get the permission of the publishers, we record the MP3 audios, but not only we publish the audios we record, but also we provide information about the authors, the books, and everything. So, what can I say? In these six years, I have seen how my pupils have left this apathy, and now they are more engaged in the subject. 
And I think, in a great extent, this has happened because we are sharing to learn and learning to share. Gandhi said a sentence that I like a lot, which is, whatever you do will be insignificant. But this is very important, but it is very important that you do it. I really agree with Gandhi's sentiments with the whole of my heart. It's very clear. And this is what I tried to instill in my pupils, because I sincerely believe that every little counts. So let me finish with two questions to you all. One, where are you on the path between the homo sapiens and the homo compartitions? And where would you like yourself and the rest of you, those around you, to be? I invite you to think about these two questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.